For number 25, I want to take R2 and then revolve it about the line AB. So um, AB is this line here. It's the line at x is equal to 1. So then when I take R2 and I revolve it about this line, um, I'm going to end up with disks. So my outer part of the disk is going to touch the y-axis always, right? Because that's the, um, the outer boundary for R2. So the outer part of my disk is going to go like this. And then the inner part of my disk is going to touch this curve for uh, fourth root of x, which is this green curve that goes like this. So it's going to touch that. That's my inner part of my disk. And then it's going to go like, like this. Yeah. So as we can see, we're going to be stacking these disks um, across the y-axis. Their sum is going to go like this, right? So for example, if I were um, if I were here, then it would create this other disk like so. Um, so we're going to be stacking up all these disks across the y-axis, which is going to give us a volume, right? Um, in the same way as if you were stacking a bunch of washers and then um, you would have a cylinder with like a hole drilled in the middle. So um, the thing that we're, we're, we have to figure out now is how are we going to express the area of this ring? So the area of this ring is actually given um, by by a larger circle, right? The area of a circle. And then we're removing the smaller circle from it with a smaller radius, right? Um, so this part here is... This ring is described by A1 minus A2. The area of the bigger uh, circle minus the area of the smaller circle. And the area of the bigger circle is given by uh, the circle with R1 uh, minus the circle with radius R2, which is the smallest radius here. Um, so let's think about how to calculate this, right? Well, the biggest radius is fairly simple because all it does is we go from here all the way out to the um, to the out outer boundary of R2. So it's always going to go from here to here, right? It's going to go from 1 to 0. In this case, um, the distance is just 1. And it's a fixed distance of 1 no matter where we're going, right? If we're going up, if we're going down, the outer part will still be um, 1 at all points. So we're going to go ahead and say that the um, the outer circle a1 a1 is just pi times r squared times 1 squared right and what about a a2 well a2 is a little bit more interesting because we're going from here all the way out to here right this is where it touches and let's think about what this distance is well this distance is just the distance um, maybe let me erase everything else so you guys can see this distance from here to here, it's just the distance of 1, right, that goes all the way out here, minus, minus, so we're going to turn around, um, maybe I'm going to do this in a different color, minus the distance from here to here, right? And that distance, going back, the orange or arrow, is just the height of the curve, the fourth root of x. Um, so this, this whole radius, the pink arrow, is just the blue arrow minus the orange. So therefore, it's 1 minus the fourth root of x. Um, but now, we, we're not going to use the fourth root of x because we're integrating with respect to y, right? We're stacking these up across the y-axis. So what we're going to do here is we're going to express um, y is equal to the x to the 1 fourth. And then we're going to express this in terms of, uh, of y. So I'm just going to put everything to the fourth power, so I have y to the power of 4 is equal to x. Um, these mean the same thing, right? But one is expressed in terms of x, and the other is expressed in terms of y. So a2 is just, uh, it's pi outside, and then remember, it's 1 minus the height of the curve. So this is 1 minus um, y to the power of 4. So I'm choosing y because I'm integrating with respect to y. Um, okay, so now we're ready to to integrate. So our integral, it goes from, let's see, it goes from 0 to 1, right? We're integrating across the x, the y-axis, sorry, from y is equal to 0 all the way to y is equal to 1. It goes from 0 to 1 of a1 minus a2, which is the, um, the area of our rings, right? We're summing up these guys right here. Uh, that's just the bigger circle minus the smaller circle, so that's just pi. I'm going to put it outside. 
times, um, oops, I forgot to square that. This should have been squared, yeah. Uh, and I, I didn't even set that up, so let me, let me, um, a1, so we have a1 minus a2, and before we do that, um, let me actually expand a2. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go uh, a, a2 is equal to pi, and I'm going to foil this out, so that's y to the power of 8, um, and then that gives us minus 2y to the power of 4, and then um, plus 1. So that's a2, where I just foiled out the, the radius that's being squared, right? So therefore, a1 minus a2, the pi still goes outside, but now we're going to have, um, that's 1 minus y to the power of 8, and then minus minus goes plus, plus 2y to the power of 4, and then uh, minus 1, right? Which is the same thing as the 1's cancel, is just pi times uh, minus y to the power of 8, plus 2y to the power of 4. Um, yeah, we're, we're good to go. So let's set, let's put in this in the integral, plus 2y to the dy, and then when we integrate this, it's just pi times minus y to the power of 9 over 9, plus 2y to the power of 4, sorry, to the power of 5, I forgot to raise the power over 5, evaluated from 0 to 1. So now here we only need to evaluate the upper boundary um, because the lower boundary goes to 0, right? It disappears. So that's just um, pi times minus 1 over 9 plus 2 fifths. Um, let me put that in my calculator. Let's see, minus 1 fifth. My, sorry, minus 1 over 9 plus 2 fifths. This gives us, let's see, 13 pi over 13 pi over 45. Yeah, so that's our volume when we um, when we take R2 and then we revolve it uh, about the line AB by summing up these disks.